Hi guys, welcome back. So Diddy went all out to throw an epic 27th birthday party for his friend, wink, wink, McMills. The day-long party held on May 3rd, 2014 caused Diddy $25,000 in rent alone. And what was left behind? Cocaine, half-empty bottle of liquor, used condoms, and blood-stained bedding. Yuck. The property manager, Jason Haight, says the bedroom the following day were disgusting. There were broken bottles of alcohol, used condoms, blood on the beddings, powder, razor blades by the hundreds, lubricant on the dressers, and marble floors. I found panties, bras, and even two iPhones in the bushes behind a bowling alley. Exotic dancers were in masks, women in tiny bras, and the main event, a naked woman served up as a sushi platter. Yes, sushi was served on a naked woman for guests to eat off of. She had only a piece of sheer vinyl covering the front of her body for hygiene purposes. As rows of sushi were framed on and around her while workers offered bottles of sauce. The property owner shared video footage of the party. It shows party goers arriving in droves. Notable faces include comedian King Bash, rappers French Montana, and Little Dirk, and other artists. The mansion was crowded with celebrities shuffling through the mass of people, accompanied by the entourages of bodyguards and women. They also had dancers in lingerie perform provocatively on set-up stages, and other scantily dressed women posed around the various rappers for photos. At one point, Mick Mill, French Montana, and Diddy stood on an elevated platform to give a speech. They were laughing with each other as one party goer shouted to see if there was liquor up there. In April 2014, the mansion's owner says he was contacted by Diddy's personal assistant saying he wanted to rent the venue for a party for McMill. It was held three days after McMill's birthday, but he specifically wanted it to be on the night of the first fight between Floyd Mayweather and Marcos Maidana. Diddy requested that all interior bedroom door locks were to be ordered new and left unopened for their arrival for security purposes as they would need to supervise the installation. And both keys were to be given to Diddy directly and nobody else. Wow. The owner claimed Diddy's team requested double-sided locks on bedroom doors to be left on lock for guest arrival, with two sets to be given to Diddy. He said, I was giving a rough estimate of 850 guests for the mansion party, and we agreed a fee of $25,000 for 24 hours. Some 900 guests showed up, and most part took in the evening's drug fuel festivities, including Diddy, who the owner described as being wasted. Of course, to oversee the evening's operations and ensure Diddy and his team would have him on site should problems arise, the owner agreed to remain on site throughout the rental. I told them I have a detached guest house in the rear of the property and that unless they summon me, I will stay there. Diddy's team insisted that cost was not a factor and said to include the price of the double-sided locks on the venue fee. Diddy allegedly had an assurance policy to cover the mansion its contents, and any loss of life for the event. What? 
Diddy even brought in his own smoke detectors. The owner said they stated this policy mandated the use of smoke detectors in all areas of the homes and guest houses, which I replied we have. They said they would prefer brand new ones and would have them shipped to me. They would install them upon arrival. They said the detectors will be temporarily attached and removed after the event. I agreed. That's what the owner said. Wow, this is crazy. So not only did he wanted the locks to be changed, every room had to have new locks and only did he get the keys to the room. And, and he also wanted his own smoke detectors attached in every room. You know what that means, right? Those so-called smoke detectors had cameras inside of them. Listen, those were not real smoke detectors. The fact that Diddy wanted to remove all of the original smoke detectors and replace them with his own smoke detectors just for the party. And once they're done, they'll take the smoke detectors. Yeah, so those were not real smoke detectors. Those were filming devices. Those were cameras inside of these fake smoke detectors. This is wild. This guy, oh wow, okay. Anyway, the party ended around 3 a.m. And there was rampant cocaine use with broken bottles and condoms wrappers left all over the property, the owner claimed. The bedroom was left in disarray. He estimated he collected around half an ounce of cocaine from around the palace. I thought it was powdered sugar everywhere, he said. So, cocaine everywhere, blood stains on the sheets, yuck. And then only Diddy can open the bedroom doors and with camera devices as smoke detectors. Oh my goodness. And you know what else he does? With every big event, Diddy would throw a party. Like, say there's the MTV Music Award. Diddy would then throw an after party. He would use these events as an excuse to throw an after party. And that's how he find these victims, young women, young men. They think they're coming to an after party, and then they ended up being victims. That's how Diddy and them had access to all these victims, because these partygoers go in as partygoers, and then they leave as amateur porn stars, because they are being filmed. They are drugged, and they are filmed. So they have these tapes of them drugged up and sex acts, and they don't even know it. And Diddy would sell these, these tapes, these videos of these young women, young men, and kids to his friends and whoever in the black market. Yeah, it's sick. It's it's really sick. Did you know after all of that, after the birthday parties that he threw for his lovers, after they show up at places and matching outfits, did you know that Mick Mill has taken steps to separate himself from Diddy? He told one fan on the street, no Diddy gang. Huh. No Diddy gang. Oh, it's kind of late for that. It is way too late for that, McMill. Oh, what's up? Yeah, y'all yeah, right Mill. now. We're playing out this motherfucker. This real cool. life. Uh-huh, real life yeah, shit, nigga, yeah. No Diddy gang, McMill in real life. Yeah. Don't ever disrespect me. You heard that shit, Meek. <laughs> yeah, Meek. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but... 
The moment I laid my eyes on McMill, I knew he was a homosexual. For some people, they only began to question McMill and Diddy's relationship when producer Rodney Jones filed that $30 million lawsuit against Diddy when he accused Diddy of um, sexual assault. So Rodney's uh, lawsuit stated that a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj had allegedly engaged in a sexual relationship with the rap mogul, leading to speculation that the redacted name was Mick Mill since he dated Nicki Minaj from 2014 to 2016. So yeah, that's when people started questioning Mick Mill and Diddy's close, very close friendship, wink, wink. But I been you he was a homosexual. I remember seeing a picture of Mick Mill outside. He had on red jeans and he was not posing. So the camera captured him in this very flamboyant, feminine stance. <laughs> that picture, let me tell you, was very telling because he wasn't posing. He was just standing like, you know, regular. And uh, yeah. And then that, the whole, the whole, po the whole stance was just, it was just screaming, wait a second, there's no way this guy is not, you know, and this is the guy, this is a so-called gangster rapper from the streets, from Philly. If you were to see this picture, I'm telling you, you would have no doubt about his sexuality, okay? And... It's crazy. I cannot find this picture anywhere. I went to the blog and I saw it on years ago because I remember the blog and I can't find it on the blog anymore. It's no longer available on the blog anymore. And that sucks because that picture was very crucial. Very, very crucial. It was, whoa. Um, but yeah, but he was dating Nicki Minaj around that time. And even Nicki called him gay when they were going back and forth on social media. <laughs> she even called him gay. She said she had, she got proof. She, she was saying all these things. She, you know, she called him gay, flat out called him gay. And she had some stuff on him. So, you know, in the relationship, that relationship made no sense. It made no sense. I thought it was fake. I'm like, there's no way Nikki's dating this guy. Because if you see her next to him, and then his whole stance, his vibe, it's just, uh, no. It was a fake relationship. I don't believe it was real. They had no connection. The vibe was off. Right? No connection at all. It just seemed fake. You know how Hollywood is. These fake relationships for publicity. He looked awkward. He always looked awkward. But next to Nikki, it was just always awkwardness. It was just like, what? What? Like, come on. Nobody's buying this. Like, cut it out, Nikki Minaj. Like, stop it. You know, it just did not look right. There were no chemistry. This guy looks strange. He look, he look awkward. He he just seems awkward. And then next to her, oh, it was even oh my gosh, it was just worse. It was, it was bad. Oh, it was bad. Even them posing was just like oh come on, stop it, stop it. Okay, we have eyes to see. Okay, we see. Well, I see. I don't know about you guys, but I see. I have discernment. I see. <laughs> but yeah, and remember too, let's not forget the pool video where Diddy was like, you're doing it and doing it well. You're doing it, daddy. You're putting in work, daddy. You're doing it and doing it and doing it well. You're putting that work, daddy. I'm proud of you. And Mick Mill had a broken back in the pool. Like he just... <laughs> like someone just took him to Pound Town. That's.
Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. What it looked like his back was hurting and he was bent over and then he's like yeah and Mick Mill could not even stand up straight he was like slouched over <laughs> and then he's like yeah you put in that work I'm sure he did put in that work he was throwing it back he was throwing it back and he blew his back out from throwing it back <laughs> I mean come on a guy's like yeah yeah, you're putting in that work. You're putting in that work. Yeah, he was probably getting a train rent on him. That's a lot of work. That's why he was slouched over like that in the pool. Couldn't even stand up. And remember, he's very, very, very tight with... What's that NFL owner's name? Kraft. Robert Kraft, I believe. And they were on a yacht. Mick Mill, Robert Kraft, and some other old man, some old white men, and it's just, yeah, it was very telling, very telling, and then another time you see him bunny hopping for, what's that guy named, the one that threw the white parties, Michael, I forgot his name, but he just, yeah, that guy is suspect, that guy? Oh no, I don't trust that guy. Michael son Ruben. Michael Ruben, I think that's his name. They had Mick Mill bunny hopping on the tennis court. Mick Mill was bunny hopping on the tennis court. Oh, it was so ridiculous. It was disturbing. This so called gangster street thug is bunny hopping for these billionaires. Oh, man, you can't tell me that Mick Mill is not a yacht boy. You know how they have yacht girls, these women that they take on the yacht for escort services. Yeah, Mick Mill is definitely a yacht boy for these billionaires. So, yeah, that's all, you guys. What are your thoughts on Mick Mill and Diddy? Close friendship. <laughs> But now he's trying to distance himself from Diddy. Do you think it's too late? And do you believe that he's a yacht boy? <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thank you for the support, you guys. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.